fellow Daz Studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to another Daz tutorial. Now today, I want to talk about something that I hear in the comments quite a bit, and that is how to properly set up a dark lit scene. And this can be tricky because in our render settings, the more light we have, the better our render is going to turn out. A darker scene tends to have what we call more fireflies, where you have like little speckles of light in the scene and your render has to go longer and longer for you to try and fix that. Or you have to do a denoiser to try and eliminate those little speckles, or you have to put it into post work into something like GIMP and try and denoise it there or do a lot of post work to get rid of those speckles. I understand that this is tricky. And you know, with render settings, there's no easy answer to fix these kind of issues. So what I have discovered and what has worked for me with dark scenes is to set up your scene and set up your lighting so that you have the appearance of darkness. So in other words, you want to light up your scene and light up your character, perhaps, with enough light that you don't have the issue of fireflies, but the surrounding area is kind of dark, so it gives you the appearance of it being dark. Now, I have an example of this. There's a famous movie called Bridge on the River Kwai, where there's a scene where they are setting up plastic explosives on a bridge and they're doing this at night and they're floating down the river and they are setting up these charges to blow up this bridge. And in the movie, it's nice and dark and everything, but they actually filmed that scene in the daytime and then just put a filter on the camera to make it appear as it was moonlight and night. So we're gonna kind of follow this idea when we set up a dark scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my render settings and we're gonna look at some of the render settings. I'm not gonna really change a whole lot. Um, if I scroll all the way up, I'm gonna keep my render settings I always have a max sample that's big and my time in seconds I just have as a huge number because I don't think this is going to take very long to um, render. I'm going to keep my render quality down to one. So I'm going to keep all of the um, f-stop and all that kind of thing at the uh, default. When I get down to my environmental mode. I'm gonna keep it at the uh, dome and scene, or I've discovered that if you go to uh, scene only, that also is, a, is an option. But let's keep it at dome and scene for right now. And I'm gonna make sure that my character camera or the um, camera is, the lights on the camera are turned off. So once I have just this simple render setting kind of determined here, I'm going to set up some spotlights and some distant lights. So to make a distant light, the icon is right here and you just click on it and you can name your distance light and hit accept. And if you look in this scene, I have kind of four distance lights set up and I just have them a long ways away. So I just put them away from the scene just to give some lights far off like it would be if it was nighttime. If we go to the distant light settings, I'm going to set the light intensity a little bit above 100. I have it set at 114. I'm going to leave the color white and I have that set up for a couple of those lights. And then for two of the distance lights, I change the color to kind of a blue and the intensity down to 40% or so. And I kind of played around with this just to get it so that I liked it. 
Then we're going to add some spotlights and I have uh, four spotlights. So remember to make a spotlight, just go to this icon right here, click on your spotlight. You can name it and add some spotlights. If I go back to my main camera here, we're going to um, set up these spotlights so that they are pointing at our character. So I want Milica to have the spotlights and then I'll show you the settings that I use. So my first spotlight, I kind of have it pointed kind of towards her back. The second spotlight, let's adjust it so it's kind of towards her front, kind of to her left shoulder. Let's take the third spotlight. We're gonna take an opposite view. I'm gonna get it out of the trees a little bit. We're gonna adjust it like this. And then the fourth spotlight is kind of more towards her right front. Now we can always adjust this. And if you look at my spotlight settings, I'm just going to click on a spotlight here. Um, under area, I always choose rectangle. And then under the photometrics, I have these set at about uh, 229,000 lumen. And I haven't changed the temperature at all. Okay, so after we get those spotlights set up, let's just um, look at it under NVIDIA iRay, see if we need to do some adjustments. Okay, so it looks a little bright on her perhaps, but you see, we want the brightness. You can see this is perfect. This is those um, fireflies I'm talking about. You can see them on her, on her shirt. You can see the fireflies. You can also see it here on the truck. And then on the microscope, there are some fireflies. So, you know, the longer we render, the better those fireflies get. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into texture mode and we're just going to um, adjust the spotlights a little bit. They are a little bright, so I'm gonna just um, kind of zoom these spotlights out a little bit. I'm not gonna change their lumens just yet. I just want to zoom out. Now the trick is we don't want to zoom out so much that it starts looking like it's daytime. So we want to have this illusion that it's dark outside, even though our character is pretty much lit up just like she would be in the daytime. All right, let's try that and go back into NVIDIA see what it looks like. Guess it would help if I chose the camera. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I tend to like this. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, another thing that I did is I added my background as a nightscape background. So, you know, to um, get that background, go to environment and then just select browse and you can select, I just saved a picture from the internet of stars and uh, just chose that as my sky, which, you know, gives you more of that illusion that it's dark outside. So see, I have several kind of sunset and space dark backgrounds that I can use. This is the one I used. I just named it space. I have several of them that um, if I want a a nighttime background. I usually just use those, but um, I have that set up as well. And so really, you know, what you have to think about is we are just trying to create that illusion of night. So just to kind of show you the difference here, if I go back to um, my render settings, I'm going to go down to, remember I had it set at dome and scene. Let's um, show you what it looks like under the other ones. You, you have to just kind of play with this. I kind of liked dome and scene with my uh, spotlights, but let's look at it under the other options just to see what the difference is. Okay, so this is under dome and scene. So I'm gonna change this to dome only, and this doesn't really work very well. Kind of gets rid of those spotlights gets rid of the scene so you won't have your spotlights anymore. So this render will be very dull. 
It looks dark outside. Maybe you, this is what you want. Uh, you know, if you want it to look dark, usually you want to highlight your character. So I don't really like this. The sun and sky only is kind of cool. It looks like there's kind of some moon and you might be able to adjust your lighting so that you can highlight, but this looks kind of cool. It looks dark, kind of looks like the moon is shining, like I said. And then if I do scene only, I get a similar set of lights from the scene and dome. But I'm gonna go back to my dome and scene. I kind of like that the best. And then um, I'm gonna get out of iRay preview. And I just need to um, pose my character because her clothes aren't quite right. And we're gonna do a render. Okay, so that helped. You can see her blouse looks much better. I think we're ready to render. So I've got, you know, Milica just kind of out for a uh, country drive and she's setting up her telescope in the night. So let's give this a render, see what our final product looks like. All right, so here's the render. I still have a little bit of noise. Uh, I can see some noise down here in her uh, on her leg, and then there's a little bit of noise in these darker areas where the telescope is. But um, I could adjust this with my spotlights, maybe focus more in on her body, get rid of those. The background, the noise in the background doesn't matter as much. We're probably focused on our, on our girl here. So I'll probably do a little bit more adjusting, get the lighting a little bit brighter or move those spotlights closer to her just to uh, make sure that she has the best quality render that I can get. And uh, then I would call it good. Also, if I was going to use this render for something like a comic, I would probably change my background because I don't like these stars that are super bright. They're kind of weird looking. Uh, too bright, so I would probably change those. But other than that, uh, I think I'm well on my way to getting a decent render that looks like it's nighttime. All right, well, I really hope this helped you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and give me a comment. I'd love to hear how you deal with dark scenes. Do you use the denoiser in Daz? Do you use the denoiser in GIMP or Photoshop? Do you do a lot of post work on these kind of pictures? I tend to try and do everything I can in Daz because I am producing a lot of pictures to make comics. So I don't have the time really to go into a lot of post work. So I try and avoid that. So let me know what you think. And uh, I'd love to hear back from you. All right. Until next time, have a wonderful day. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.